This episode and every episode of the Beer Guys Radio Show is brought to you by Ironmonger Brewing. Visit Ironmonger at their tap room in Marietta, Georgia, or online at ironmongerbrewing.com. Open up a tab, grab a seat, and pour a pint. It's time for the Beer Guys Radio Show. You want free beer? Go to the brewery. Dedicated to the art, science, and enjoyment of craft beer. Yeah, what's wrong with the beer we got? Now, here are your hosts, Tim Dennis and Brian Hewitt. And welcome to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We're broadcasting from the Beer Guys Radio Studios in Marietta, Georgia. And this week we're going to be talking about pairing craft beer with cheese. I'm Tim Dennis, and with me, as always, is my good friend and co-host, Mr. Brian Hewitt. Hi, Mr. Tim Dennis. Joining us today, we have Bernard McCoy, the mastermind behind the monthly beer and cheese pairings that happen at the Brickstore Pub in Decatur, Georgia. We're going to get into some specific pairings, but we're also going to talk about some general guidelines you can use if you want to set up your own cheese pairing event. Bernard, thanks for joining us. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me. Good, man. Thanks for coming up here. You know, I haven't made it down to one of the brick store pairings yet, but I see them every month coming along. They always look nice. So we figured since I couldn't make it down there, we're just going to bring you up here, man. I got no problem with that. (laughs) We got got some cheeses that we'll talk a little bit later, but I'm excited to get in. And I'm not, pairing's not my strong suit, guys. That's that's not my thing. I'm good at uh, drinking beer, picking out beers, but pairing them with cheese or foods or anything is not... Not my thing. I, I generally pair by drinking whatever I have at hand and eating whatever I had at, at <laughs> That's hand. That's pair. And roughly taking These note Doritos of it. pair great with this IPA, <laughs> right? And you know what? A lot of people say that uh, IPA and Doritos, especially those nacho cheese Doritos, go together well. I agree with them. I Who's think that a lot good. of people, though? Who are, who Possibly me and okay. the people I talk to, the voices in my head. I don't good know. enough. Yeah. Well, Bernard, yeah, man, we do appreciate you coming up here, joining us, uh, sharing your expertise. We're we're looking forward to getting some tips, so maybe next time I can do this a little better on my own. Brian, what did uh, you get into this week? Well, I think the big thing was the uh, judging at the Wake and Bake Off at the uh, Terrapin ATL Brew Lab. So there was a bunch of different uh, dishes made with uh, the Wake and Bake uh, oatmeal coffee. Coffee oatmeal stout. Yeah, there we go. The coffee oatmeal stout. And uh, yeah, a ton of different dishes. I had a few of their interesting one-offs. The the one that I really loved the most was the the Golden Glove that they randled through the coffee beans. That was really good. Uh, yeah, that was really. You tasty. know what I love there, Brian? What's that? The Michiladas. Oh yes, I had you a few did. of those. I, that's the. <laughs> it's been many years. My parents used to make when I was a kid. They just called them tomato beers, and they'd take V8 or tomato juice, and that was pretty much it. Some salt and pepper, but uh, Terrapin at the brunch wake and bake off, they actually set up a Bloody Mary bar. Was, yeah, I saw the pictures, and I was kind of jealous. A little jealous. Yeah, yeah a little, it's, a it should have come out there. Yeah. It was a good time. What do they traditionally use to make the Michiladas? Because I think they were using a Hellas beer. Is that the right? I, you know, I'm not even sure. I think th- I know a, a lager. I think is yeah. pretty standard, just a basic lager, and then your your Bloody Mary mix or whatever. And we talked about the fact that sometimes they even use clam juice in there. Because <laughs> should I get a glass full of tomato juice, clam juice, and beer, please? That sounds like I would want to put a, a watch on you to make sure you yeah. weren't into harming yourself if right. you asked for that. Keep an eye on him, Bernard. Do you drink uh, Michiladas? Not really. No. Well, we do. Okay. <laughs> As far as like mixing juices or stuff like that with beer, we do a lot of beer mosas. More the fruit side of juices, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like orange juice. IPAs, or we do what do you call them? Boathouse Farm or something like that. They make oh, little yeah. smoothie the, things. The smoothie drink. You oh, get yeah. you get you like a Athena, a regular Athena, mix with that. It's perfect. It's I could see that. Smoothie. I could see that. If I wanted to eat some cheese with my Michelada, would it pair the same as like a Bloody Mary? Because <laughs> uh, you not. Can, probably not. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, my instinct with that says cheddar for some reason. But or I think Doritos. I, I think I go to oh, cheddar yeah. or nacho <laughs> yeah. cheese Doritos. Yes, that's that's where I usually go. Good stuff. You know, I'd forgot about the Wake and Bake Off. It's uh, so much stuff done this week. It was tough to see. Also popped over to Scofflaw for their F Cancer event fundraiser they did. I think this is the second one. Is that right? Yeah, yes. That sounds good. We're going to go yes. with that. Sam's nodding his head. He's yeah. confirming for us here. Uh, we also checked out Steady Hand Brewing Indeed. Company here, new brewery. They actually haven't even had their official grand opening yet, but we stopped in there and enjoyed their beers. Uh, hazy IPA they had. I think it was called Cloudland. Cloudland and that Sweet Potato Farmhouse. I really enjoyed that one. I don't wasn't super sweet potato-y, but that was a good farmhouse. Yeah. I think a lot of times that's just more fermentable. You know, yeah, like pumpkins, sweet potatoes, that kind of stuff. So good stuff. Bernard, you get into anything interesting this week? Um, 
Good Words one ish anniversary. Right. Yeah. So they opened back in November, but they celebrated just past weekend. It's really good. Uh-huh. It is. That's really we good. drank their Anna Fantastic last week. Their fruited sour that they did. The Anna where we got there, me, me and the rest of the ATL beer gang group, they was just giving us beers left and right and everybody's favorite beer was in a fantastic it's it's really good that's you know every now and then you get a beer and we've got a lot of good beer in georgia you know there's a lot of good beer to drink but every now and then i get one that just i'm like man that really nails all the right points there and that's that's one that i always talk fondly of so smalls i forgot you're here in the studio even though you're sitting next to me what'd you do this week uh, well, this weekend was my anniversary with my boyfriend, oh. so we went to Deer Beer Garden because you always okay. get some really good beers there and food yeah. and some Spetzel and all the good stuff. So there was the big three years, is big that three right? Three years, yes. Yeah. I haven't killed him yet. That's good. There's still time. <laughs> Congrats <laughs> to Orion there on, on not being killed yet. So yeah, Deer Beer Garden is always a good place. Yeah, have a good time there. Well, you know, Tim, I think it is time for the beers of the week. Crack open a cold one. It's the Truck and Tap Beer of the Week. Woo-hoo! Craft beer and food trucks in downtown Woodstock. Truckandtap.com. Brian, we've got a great selection of beers to get into this week. We've got several that are meant to pair with our cheeses, but a few that, that are meant to just drink. We did pre-gaming with a new one from our friends here at Ironmonger. The hops remain the same. That's a 6% Northeast IPA. They've got with Citra, El Dorado, and Huel Melon Hop which was really nice. They've also got a new stout on here that uh, I tried earlier in the week that's called Goodbye Toby. Yeah. yeah. I was, I'm horrible at remembering these beer names. But, I think that's uh, right. Peanut butter chocolate stout, yeah. that if you like those flavors, that's really good. Then, of course, when we get into our beer and cheese pairing, we're going to go through a few different styles. We have Creature Comfort's Bebo Pilsner. We have Zillicoa Saison, Trim Tab's Mosaic Singularity IPA, and from St. Bernardus, we have their Prior 8 Double that we're going to get into with some cheeses. Sounds delicious. It's going to be great, Brian. So, Brian, what is happening in this week's Craft Beer News? What's in the news? The beer guys have the scoop. Extra, extra, read all about it. Time for headlines. Well, you know, Tim, big beer just can't catch a break. <sighs> Again. I know, right? I, I feel like a broken record. So earlier this year, we heard that Molson Coors sales were down 2.1% in 2018. Now we're hearing that Heineken USA has cut 15% of its workforce. They say the cuts are needed to uh, restructure their sales force and all the usual stuff about increasing efficiencies and cutting costs and that sort of thing. But their off-premise dollar sales uh, declined by 4.1% in uh, multi-outlet convenience stores in 2018. So it's it's kind of necessary. So Heineken's following a big trend in Big beer. Uh, so last year, Anheuser Busch, Miller Coors, Constellation Brands, and Pabst Brewing all had significant layoffs. One thing that isn't being cut, though, is their new alcohol-free beer called Heineken 0.0. They're planning to invest a good amount of money in pushing that product forward. Okay, I get new market, man. Go after it. So the drama over corn syrup is still raging. Uh, this week, we've learned that the Beer Growth Initiative is on the rocks after AB InBev's corn syrup ads. So uh, what is the Beer Growth Initiative? You ask this has been a year-long marketing effort on the part of big beer companies to promote the beer industry as a whole without involving any specific brand names and to slow losses in the sector to wine and spirits. But in reaction to the corn syrup ads, Miller Coors has announced they will not be participating in the next beer growth initiative meeting. And apparently Heineken USA is also reconsidering their involvement in the initiative, but they haven't made a final decision. AB InBev, being the big dumb animal that it is, says it will continue to try to work with other breweries to promote the industry while at the same time continuing to air negative commercials about an ingredient that's widely used in the industry, even by AB InBev. So again, Tim, big beer just can't catch a break. I got things to say about this, Brian. I've got to interject here a little bit. Okay. If you remember when the Brewers Association came out with the independent craft brewers sale, the high end, which is AB InBev's craft division that owns 10 Barrel Brewing, uh, Wicked Weed, among some others, they put out a video called Six Viewpoints from the High End. In that video, they have the guys from Wicked Weed and from Tin Barrel and many others that basically demean the Brewers Association, saying they're causing division within the beer industry and that we all need to work together. We've got to fight the bigger enemy, wine and spirits. (laughs) We're all making beer here. We should all work together. Uh, The guy from Tin Barrel says that we're all making beer and consumers should be allowed to make up their mind on their own based on the beer. So why Budweiser says this and they say everybody should work together and not talk (laughs) trash about each other, then they come out with their Super Bowl corn syrup commercial. So the old do as I say, not as I do from old AB and Bev there. Well, you're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We do need to take a break, but we'll be back very soon to talk about beer and cheese pairing. (laughs) 
craft beer forged with a reverence for tradition and new styles that start a revolution. Ironmonger Brewing. The brewers at Ironmonger Brewing pride themselves at being masters of barrel-aged, hoppy, and sour beers. They invite you to their tap room in Marietta, Georgia to taste and see. Also visit their barrel room for an intimate drinking experience with great live entertainment. Keep up to date on all things Ironmonger by liking them on Facebook. Ironmonger Brewing, establishing a new standard in craft beer. Brian and Tim, the beer guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and Duluth are always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy, Brian. They've got 18 of them. As for the truck part, that's where it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks, so you're getting a different menu every day. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and Duluth. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guys sent you. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Next Friday is Hawaiian Shirt Day. So, you know, if you want to, go ahead and uh, wear a Hawaiian shirt and jeans. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. If you missed an episode, don't worry. All episodes are available as a podcast. Subscribe on your favorite podcasting app and never miss a show. We're talking beer and cheese pairing with Bernard McCoy, one of the kitchen killers at Decatur, Georgia's Brick Store Pub. The Kitchen Killers. They kitchen do kill killers. it over there. Yes. A, you Thank guys you. put oh, yeah. out some really good stuff. Thank you. You know what? Since we're talking cheese here, I want to launch a formal request slash complaint. What's going on? Bring back the raclette. Oh, <laughs> yes. Bring back the raclette. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think I mentioned that to you before, and you said, I hate making that. Man, right? I, I hated making the raclette. It is yeah. so messy that you got to microwave all this cheese and... and <laughs> Because <laughs> you have to melt it down. Like, we shaved it down, and you have to heat it up. And then yeah. so you have to melt it down a little bit, like, with the microwave, like, 30 seconds. And then you pop it in the oven for another, like, 10 minutes to really get it melty. And it's, it's just too much. You're just making me <laughs> want it even more. You, you guys should get, like, the real deal reclat, the wheel with the flame over it. <laughs> yeah. Scrape it off there. Well, could Tim bring his own little reclat maker and have you supply the cheese because I know he's got I one. I do have a reclet. Yeah. But I got a reclet melter. Little little tea up. candle thing underneath. That's right. It does the job, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like, You've enjoyed reclet from I, my cheesy reclet maker. Yes, I have. Yeah. Yes, I have. Well, Bernard, we are here. We're talking beer and cheese. We're going to get into some pairings here in a minute. But before we do, let's do a little setup. So if someone wants to do a beer and cheese pairing at home, what's the process for kind of setting it up there? What are some general tips for doing this? So you never... You never want to destroy anything. So as far as when I say destroy, you don't want to put this harsh blue cheese with like this light Berliner because you won't taste anything. So you never want to destroy it. You always want to find either create me personally. I always look to create new flavors or just or bring out of flavors in the beer so or in the cheese. So if you got a hoppy beer, you know, hops are really earthy, especially super hoppy beers that taste like trees. So you want to... Like aim for the straightforward approach. Do like a cheddar to kind of aim for bringing out the earthiness in cheddar cheese because cheddar cheese is really earthy too. So just kind of make sure you don't just don't get too outrageous with it when you want to pair so, things. Together. It sounds like a good tip for any kind of pairs. Yeah. Like talking about cigars and whiskeys yeah. or anything. You don't have a super bold cigar and a soft whiskey yeah. or something Not like that. Not typically, no. You're going to just total, or vice versa, you wouldn't want to smoke a mild Connecticut cigar and have a super peaty, uh, you know, Isle of Scott. It's yeah. true. That's true. And, and, and with that, sometimes, <clears throat> depending on what you're, you're going for, I could see sometimes wanting to go lighter on the whiskey just because I'm more interested in the, the flavor of the cigar. But generally speaking, balance. You want balance, really. Yeah complimentary or contrasting if you're just wanting the whiskey for the alcohol in it you know just sometimes to, then you like you know what just get a non-complicated whiskey and enjoy your cigar sometimes that's the pairing that's called that for makes sense Tim. that makes sense now when we get to bernard we move on to to the tasting is there a way that you should taste your beer and your cheese together going through culinary school we had to take a wine class so they teach you how to taste wine so i take that same technique like the way to explain it you take a little sip you you kind of swish it around your mouth, like sucking it in, and it kind of like get vibrates. it kind of vibrating. Yeah, there, right? it yeah. vibrates yeah. all over your your tongue and the roof of your mouth. And then 
I eat a piece of cheese with nothing else in my mouth. And then while while you're chewing the cheese and you get the taste of the cheese, you you put a little more beer in your mouth. While cheese is still in your mouth, that way you can you can taste each one individually and you get to taste them together. And that's the way how I put together the pairing. But a lot of times you won't have the time to do all that, so you can just put them just do them both at the same time and and go from there. Still going to enjoy it, right? Yeah, you're Grab still your bite enjoy of cheese, it. get you a drink of beer and go. Huh? Yeah. So when you're setting up the, the the pairing events that you do every month, what do you start with? You say, "Hey, we've got this beer in. We gotta we gotta work with this beer," or do you say, "Hey, I found this great cheese. I gotta find some beers to go with it." How does that work? Both ways. Both so ways. It, I see a uh, cheese on one of the catalogs that I have that we order cheese from, and I'm like, "I want that cheese." So I'll just start researching the cheese and find a beer for it. Most of the time, though, it's just, "All right, we got all this beer in. What can I use?" So I just taste the beer. And just start thinking of different cheeses I can bring in. And I always bring in extra cheese, like multiple cheese, because a lot of times you think a pairing will work and it just don't work. So you need to have that back up. Now, one thing that I was told when I was kind of looking at this is it with one thing that makes beer a little more difficult than pairing with wine is like if you say I've got a Chardonnay, there's a little bit of variance in the flavor profile, but a Chardonnay is pretty dialed in. Right. But if you say IPA, you could go from, like you said, taste like trees right. to taste like oranges or right. pineapples or whatever. Creamsicles so, even. Right. <laughs> so with an IPA, you can't just say pair this with an IPA yeah. because there's a super broad range there, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's super – like with that, you you really – it's always going to be easier to taste a beer before and then find the cheese that way because, yeah, just like you said, it's all different flavors – when I do the cellar beers, because I do do cellar beers a lot too, at the at the pub, and once you you know when you sell a beer, flavors change, so you have to taste that beer to find what you're looking for. That sounds like you're making up excuses to sip on some of them cellar beers. Yeah. Oh man! <laughs> oh, I got to go drink. I'm that. gonna have to taste this. <laughs> a lot more research needed. It's part of the job. Got to do it. Who doesn't like to get paid to drink beer? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned having to have multiple cheeses. Have have you had some combinations that just really didn't work, like not a little bit, but like really, really oh, didn't yeah. work? Like what's, a, what's some of those? So there's there's a um, – uh, it's called a Shakarag Blue. It's out of Tennessee. It's really, really good blue cheese. So it's, uh, it's a blue cheese rack, wrapped in oak leaves, and the oak leaves are soaked in whiskey. So the cheese huh. like the cheese tastes like this nice big whiskey – Blue and I kind of I'm sold, and so I was like, all right, let's do this with an IPA because people IPAs and blue cheese really pair well together. Like a lot of people may not think so, but they pair really well together. So, but I just put it with an IPA, and the cheese was so strong it just cut straight through it. So it's like that certain style of blue you wouldn't want to put with an IPA. It just wouldn't work at all. So I ended up putting it with a stout. You know, everybody likes barely stout, so it's just perfect that way we but it's whiskey and whiskey yeah with any yeah. pairing you've got some guidelines but the, these are guidelines they're not rules yeah you can't go to the store and it's like okay i know this cheddar pairs with this i cheddar and ipa right grab any cheddar grab any ipa and go you, you're rolling the dice there it just may not work right. for you right like yeah there's a lot of them like a sour beer and a gouda is never going to work to me i I've, I've tried it multiple times because i always even when i put the pairings together I taste each beer with each cheese because we do five beers and five cheese. So I taste each beer with each cheese, even though I know it's not going to work because you never know what might pops up. Like, but yeah, like stuff like that is just never going to work. So Any surprises there, like some that, that shouldn't work that do? Yeah. Um, man, it was. What we'll was put it? you on the spot there with that one. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I know there were some. Yeah, yeah. There's been a couple, man. Like I have, I've put together. I've, man. I couldn't even think of one right now. <laughs> we'll come back to that. See, yeah. put him on the spot. No, so here's another question for you on thinking about cheese. Can you get a good cheese at like Publix, Kroger? Uh, it seems like most of the ones I've found that I've really enjoyed, I've had to go to Whole Foods or the local provisions. We picked up our cheeses at a place here in Atlanta called Star Provisions, which had some good ones. So, so um, pub, like Publix and Kroger, they may have – better cheese selections than like a walmart would say like walmart has a cheese selection but it's like <laughs> applewood smoked cheddar like your right. basic you know applewood smoked cheddars from wherever but if you really want to find a good cheese you have to go to places that specialize in like whole foods you know they specialize in 
certain foods, a lot of farm the table type stuff, stuff like that. So you need to really go to those those high end grocery stores for the. So you've never done a Dollar General cheese and never. beer pairing <laughs> never. before. Never. Okay. <laughs> I never. wanted I wanted to try the Aldi cheeses. They came out with a bunch of yeah. like beer soaked or whiskey soaked cheeses, and I I thought about getting some just to see how they were, but I didn't have time. I'm for pretty that. I'm pretty sure those are some good cheeses, but you never <laughs> you never want to like um we're we're selling a product like to people, so I don't want to be like yeah I got this cheese straight from Kroger. <laughs> like no, this like, was a dollar ninety nine a pound. Right, <laughs> right. like nobody's everybody's gonna be like what nobody's gonna want to pay the price for a Kroger cheese like. So you, that you makes gotta sense. wanna Yeah. You're not gonna go to a nice beer and cheese pairing at a pub to eat cheese from Kroger. Right. Yeah. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We do need to take a break, but we're gonna get back and we're gonna get into these beer and cheese pairings in just a moment. <laughs> We are Reformation Brewery, celebrating the reformer in you. Locally crafted within the renowned Etowah watershed of Woodstock, Georgia, Reformation creates yeast-forward brews full of aroma and flavor crafted to last. Come see us in beautiful Woodstock, Georgia, for a tour and tasting of unique brews that you can't find anywhere else. Reformation Brewery, set beer free. ReformationBrewery.com Brian and Tim, the beer guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and Duluth are always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy, Brian. They've got 18 of them. As for the truck part, that's where it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks, so you're getting a different menu every day. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and Duluth. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guys sent you. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You passed out cigarettes for a smoke on on Earth Day. You installed speed bumps on the handicap ramps. And most recently, you dumped 100 pounds of meat on a peaceful vegan protest. Oh, come on. That was way more than 100 pounds. Now, back to the Beer Guys radio show. Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. I want to give a quick shout out to one of our great radio affiliates, WRKQ, 1250 AM in Madisonville, Tennessee. Catch Beer Guys Radio on WRKQ every Saturday at noon Eastern. And now back to some hot cheese talk with Bernard McCoy. The cheese is room temperature. Is, yeah. that, is that hot? But the talk is hot. <laughs> the talk is hot, yes. It's warming up as we speak. <laughs> Bernard, in the last segment, we kind of set up how you would set up your beer and cheese tasting, gave some tips on selecting your beers and cheeses and how to taste there. So now we're going to talk about some of these parents. You know what? Before we get into this, though, I want to give you a chance, give a shout out to your show. And I'll let you tell folks about it real quick. So you do a beer in life and beats, beats, brews in life. Yes. Podcast. So t- what's that show about? So beats, brews in life. We have a um, my the host. I'm the co-host. So the host, uh, Marius Daniel. He works down at Leon's. They are the sister re- restaurant to us at Brickstore. So uh, he saw us into craft beer heavily. He saw us doing the Selena beer gang thing, and. Uh, he came to me and was like, yo, I'm trying to start a podcast, and he's a music producer. So the podcast is, is we get music producers to come in to drink craft beer, who's most of them never drink a craft beer, and they talk about how they produce music and make beats. So it's, it's another way, it's, it's an, another good way to, to bring diversity into craft beer, as for, like how we do with Atlanta Beer Gang, but now it's through a podcast, so... You get the best of both. Music and beer always go together. Sure. So it's like you get the best of both worlds to where you get these producers. They play live beat sets on the podcast, and we drink craft beer and talk about beer. That sounds pretty awesome. Check it out. So, Bernard, we have, uh, we've sampled a couple beer and cheeses here, and we talked about it. We're going to talk a little bit here. The first one we got into was the Karst Cave Aged, and we paired that with Bebo Pilsner from Creature Comforts. And I know the notes that I got to it. They they described the cheese at uh, Star Provisions as a cheddar, but I got a big Cave Age Gruyere flavor from it. You know, not so much of the cheddar notes. And looking at Karst's website, they say it's kind of a cheddar. Yeah. 
healthcare blend. Uh, they describe it as sharp and buttery, and it uh, pairs well, they said, also with a Kolsch, or if you want to go wine, a Cabernet Sauvignon. And accompaniments are dark chocolate, sopracetta, sopracetta? Smalls, you, you got some Italian in you. How do I say so, Yeah, you had it right. Sopracetta, so yeah. Okay. Uh, caramelized walnuts or dried apricots, and we tried a few of those with it. So, uh, Brian, what did you think of this pairing? What notes did you get? I really enjoyed it. Um, it's it, it's it's interesting how it evolved. So you, you you take the sip of the beer, you you take some of the cheese, you take take the beer in there. It changes. And uh, I'm trying to th- how would I describe it? Because I'm thinking about the pairing we did after it more than that. But uh, it's very a very positive thing. I, I really enjoyed all of the elements. The apricot with it, it cut some of the sweetness of the apricot when you mixed it in there. It, it brought out some of the sweetness. I think with the uh, it. it changed everything everything changed the beer uh changed after you had the cheese the cheese changed after you had the beer mixed in some of the other ingredients and everything evolved and i really i I enjoyed that a lot i did too bernard let's get your expert opinion here what did you think of this pairing and what notes did you get to me like when you when we paired it together so what you just did the cheese and the beer really brought out like the aromas of the beer, like all the, the floral notes in the beer and the cheese, which is pretty, pretty nice. But then when you ate the rind, it kind of changed the, the beer completely. It changed everything completely, which that's what you kind of want to look for in pairings. Like you want you, the purpose of pairing stuff together is to to convince like you just want to convince people what you believe in, in a sense. So it's like. With the uh, what we paired them together is like everybody had different notes, but if I say this is what this tastes like and I, I give a good like description of it, most people are going to believe that. So it, it came out really well. Yeah, really the power like of suggestion. Yeah. if you tell people what's coming up there. I'd forgotten about that rind. When you taste that rind, there was an interesting uh, musty softness earthy. to it. Yeah, yeah earthy like musty an earthy softness funk to it. I will say this, yeah. I. I enjoyed the taste of the rind. It definitely changed the cheese. It softened the sharpness of the cheese yeah. quite a bit. I preferred the cheese without the rind. The sharper, the butterier, and with the rind, the beer, to me, I didn't enjoy it nearly as much. But there was definitely a difference, like you said, Brian, cheese on its own, beer before cheese, cheese after beer, and then rind in the same way. We had like six or seven flavor combinations with one beer and one cheese. Maybe we should have paired the rind itself with a completely different beer. Yeah, or the trash that can, or the, you know, so whatever you want to do. I was thinking there. goose. You know, if we could that find might have been that the little, funky earthy goose. There. Little, right. A little, uh, like a Brett something or other, maybe yeah. would have been kind of fun with that. But uh, now, Bernard, you said that this cheese would have probably also paired well with a nice IPA, right? Yes. Yeah, so you know, West Coast style IPAs, they're really hoppy. So with, if you would have ate the rind and the cheese together, it just would have like pretty much tastes like the earth. Like how I tell everybody, it's just think like you falling off a bike and just eating grass it would have tasted like that <laughs> so a question i have uh, with eating the rind how do you know which rind to eat because i know that of our selections we have here some of them you can eat and some of them you can't and i'm never sure what right. which so wax rinds is never okay to eat um like the car the rind on the cars is all natural rinds because rinds is mold like pretty much rinds is mold unless it's wax rinds yeah, and you can eat mold, certain molds because certain I mean, mold yeah. like bread. Bread is mold, so you could eat mold. So like that moldy a, blue cheese we got there. Yeah, yeah. you can right. eat that. Yeah. So it's just it just depends. You just have to look and see. Like wax wines is never okay. Um, there's other rinds out there that you can eat, but it just tastes completely gross. So it's like why why eat it? And they wash the rinds in different things don't they yeah. yeah what what's the purpose of that washing um, the rind so it kind of helps helps hold the cheese together and okay. um it helps ferment the cheese too oh all right pulls out they normally use like a salt wash yeah right? like, and it will help yeah, pull out pull a little out, moisture yeah it pulls yeah. out moisture to help the cheese cure it uh it'll help it cure faster sometimes because but you can you can wash it like um there's a cheddar out of vermont vermont farmstead and they wash their Ryan, they wash the whole cheese actually in beer. Yeah. Yeah. Really? I yeah. saw one they do that they do that with Hetty Topper actually, yeah. that they'll wash it up. So, oh, yeah, right. Now really you're on cool. the quest, right? I right. am, yeah. yeah, ISO. Well, our next cheese here, we did a Euphoria Sheep's Milk Gouda that is E W E Euphoria Sheep's Milk Gouda, and we paired that with an IPA. In order to have a little fun there, we actually used two different IPAs. 
to check that out. Now, one thing I noticed right up front is I, I was getting this flavor that I'm like, this is familiar to me, but I couldn't place it, and it finally hit me. It was a gamey, like, sheepy flavor. I got that in the cheese. It sheepy. Real, very sheepish, <laughs> right? But I thought it was it was interesting that I got that gaminess out of that cheese. Uh, they described this, the cheesemaker is sweeter. I didn't get a lot of the sweetness. I got a buttery butterscotch, the gaminess, you know, kind of a sharp Gouda. But uh, I thought it was pretty tasty. Smalls, what did you think of this Gouda? I, I enjoyed it, I, but I didn't get really the sweetness. I got more of right. the nuttiness, nutty part of it, out of it. But, yeah, it was good. Now, we tried two beers. Yes. We had the Trim Tab beer that we talked about, Mosaic Singularity. And we also, from uh, Old Nation, we got their Boss Tweed. Is that a double IPA, It Brian? is a double IPA, yeah. Smalls, which one did you prefer? I preferred the Boss Tweed with it, personally. But I mean, both were really good, but I preferred the Boss with that one. Bernard, what's your expert opinion on this pair? Me, personally, well, this is great. So when pairing beers with cheese, IPA and IPA. So you think it's the same beer, but, I mean, they're brewed differently. There they could be different hops in each beer. So it changes the flavor profile of the cheese or, or in the beer. So you get different tastes because there's different flavors in each beer, even though it's the same style of beer. Me, personally... I like the mosaic better. It it really brought out it was it was more desserty than than the boss tweet. The boss tweet was really gamey, just like you said, which was pretty nice. So. And we definitely brought a lot of the fruit character out with the cheese. It brought a lot oh, of yeah. fruit yeah. character out in that beer. Good stuff. Well, we've got a couple more pairings we're going to talk about here in a minute. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show, and we'll be back right after this. <laughs> Craft beer forged with a reverence for tradition and new styles that start a revolution. Ironmonger Brewing. The brewers at Ironmonger Brewing pride themselves at being masters of barrel-aged, hoppy, and sour beers. They invite you to their tap room in Marietta, Georgia to taste and see. Also visit their barrel room for an intimate drinking experience with great live entertainment. Keep up to date on all things Ironmonger by liking them on Facebook. Ironmonger Brewing. Establishing a new standard in craft beer. We are Reformation Brewery, celebrating the Reformer in you. Locally crafted within the renowned Etowa watershed of Woodstock, Georgia, Reformation creates yeast-forward brews full of aroma and flavor crafted to last. Come see us in beautiful Woodstock, Georgia, for a tour and tasting of unique brews that you can't find anywhere else. Reformation Brewery, set beer free. ReformationBrewery.com The Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Cannibal! Cannibal coming. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. If you enjoy the show, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash beerguys. Patrons can get some cool perks like Beer Guys swag and commercial-free episodes. And now back to some hot cheese beer talk. and cheese talk. Hot, yeah. beer, and hot cheese beer, talk. beer and cheese talk, yes, with The Bernard. cheese is definitely hotter than the beer, fortunately. Well, Bernard, we've paired through a couple more cheeses here that we're going to talk about. And uh, the first one we got into is a Bellamy Blue Cheese, and we paired that with St. Bernardus's Belgian Double. Uh, the, we, the cheese is from Sequatchie Cove Creamery in Tennessee. It is a raw milk cheese aged 90 to 120 days, and the rind is lightly washed with applewood smoked sea salt. They suggest this would also pair well with a smoky rock beer or a Sauternes wine would be good. The accompaniments are toasted nuts, strong honey, cured meats, and olives. So we tried a few of those pairings with it that seemed to work very well. That's a really nice blue cheese. And we found out we found out you're not a blue cheese fan. No. I so. hate blue cheese. Explain <laughs> yourself, sir. Right, right. <laughs> but this cheese, when you're when you're going for a blue, because I know the way it works, even if you're not a fan, you still know kind of how it works. When you're going for a blue, like what did you think of this one compared to some others? And what characteristics in this one are we looking to pair with? One, this blue is actually really good because it's mild. I wouldn't say I like it. 
I can I can withstand Malder blue. You hate it less than <laughs> yeah, other blue right. cheeses, right? But I mean, it's it, it's part of the job, so uh, I will eat blue cheese. I'll pretty much eat anything because I mean I'm a chef, so you you got to eat. It. And then, but with this pairing though, this is probably surprisingly my favorite pairing so far. Okay, interesting. Which, and because so the beer, the Saint Bernard is is like really dark fruit heavy, and blue cheese and dark fruits go really well together. But when you taste this. It really, in the front end, as soon as you taste it, brings out that dark fruit, and you get all these, like, plum and uh, red grapes and stuff. But in the on the back end, once you swallow everything, it almost makes the beer taste like they smoke the malts. And those are, like, my favorite pairings where you get two things in one instead of it's just, like, all right, this tastes like grass, this tastes like nuts. It's like, right. man, it's, it's yeah. almost like a wave of different things that goes on. The beer and cheese both bring out things that you'd never get Right. And the other by itself. Right. There. Yeah. Which is phenomenal. Very good stuff. Brian, what do you think of this pairing? I thought it was really good. This is, so far, it's been, uh, the blue cheese was my favorite of, of the cheeses that we had, the pairings and just by itself. You know, with the with the, the prior eight, the St. Bernard's prior eight, it had a, it did have the, the nice fruity, creamy characters together. I enjoyed that. But what I really kind of dug was the, uh, I tried a triple A, which is an IPL from uh, Arches. And, uh, I, I really liked uh, the way they played off each other, and especially it, it kind of, like there was the barnyard, but it had like a leather element, and the smoke that he was talking about became more present and more noticeable to me with, with the Triple A. So yeah. I like the IPL with the blue cheese a great deal. I thought that and was a two, great pairing. two different ends of the yes. spectrum as far as pairing goes. Uh, Bernard, did you get to try it with the Triple A, with yes. the IPL? Yes. What were the differences there that you saw pairing so, those two? compared to the St. Bernard's uh, with the IPL is – way more earthy like you get all the grassy notes the hops really came out and the smoke did come out more with the ipl compared to the saint bernard's because the the saint bernard's is more sweet compared to the ipl yeah that was good and i love blue cheese you know i like the sharp stuff one thing that i noticed on this a lot of blue cheese is really crumbly this is very creamy it's a very soft and creamy blue cheese and like you mentioned bernard it's it's not as pungent it's a little milder blue cheese but you still get that funky that earthy funk in there that i like a little fruity you know, fruity yeah. as far as yeah. blues go. So I really like that one. Smalls, how about you? Would you are you a blue cheese fan? I, I like the milder blue cheese. Okay. I prefer those. But this this one was pretty good. Exactly what he Bernard had mentioned. Like I totally got that smoky flavor once I drank the beer again with it. It was just it was, it was like whoa, is this is the same beer. Like it was right. really good. You know what I had one time? Someone did a spinach salad where they did a warm vinaigrette where they melted the blue in it and i think that would be banging with this yeah. kind of salt you know warm the vinaigrette let not even so much melted the blue but just kind of put it in there to soften and drizzle it over uh, wilt a spinach salad with it you got the you got the edge off of the spinach to cut into it but you also have the acid from the the vinaigrette to cut into it i can see that being really good i think it sounds very, very good, good. Yeah. yeah definitely give it a shot so our next cheese that we have here is a Cravenzina, if I'm saying that correctly. It is from a uh, creamery in Italy. I'm not going to say this right, but it's Casa Ifico del Alta Longa in the southern Piedmont region of Italy. I know I wasn't close there, but I, I gave it my best shot. And this is a cow and sheep's milk soft rind cheese uh, ripened for about 15 days. So a very young cheese. So they said once it hits the shelves in the States, it's probably about a month old when we get it. There. Oh, okay. So a very young cheese. I like this one a lot. I like soft cheeses. I like, uh, you know, the camembert and, uh, you know, the other cheeses. And What's the other one that's a popular soft rind cheese um, that I'm forgetting right uh, now? Brie? Brie. Yeah. Yep. Brie. So Brie's and camembert and that. So this is in that family, the soft edible rind cheeses. This is the softest one that I've had, though. This one is almost like butter. Very spreadable, very creamy, uh, mild. Uh, you get a funky earthiness in Brie's and camembert that's there, but a lot milder again in this cheese and we paired this one with a uh, saison from zillicoa brewing out of uh, Asheville, north carolina and those flavors played extremely well together that was really good so bernard this uh, how do you think we did on this pairing with so, the with this pairing is more when you taste the beer itself is really citrusy you get a lot of like lemon flavors and then when when you tasted the, the cheese with the beer it kind of cut out all the lemon like the citrus flavors to me and it all all i was getting like Belgian yeast from the beer. This cheese is really light, super light. So I, I usually go more of the Pilsner routes with these super light style cheese. But it worked really well because 
it may not be like the best pairing or whatever, but it added a new flavor. So that's what that's what you want to look for is if it creates something new, it works. So and that's what that's exactly what this did. And like you said, this is not it's not a science. You know, we don't know this is a soft cheese, this is a saison. These are going to pair. And if we had done this, if we put a little more thought, time, and effort into it, we could have tried them all before. But all of these pairings, we were just going based on we did sample the cheeses. Brian and I got and they to were sample all really the good. cheeses. Yeah. Uh, the beers we're familiar with, sure. most of them. Uh, but this is one, you know, that, uh, like you said, it's not just because you say a soft cheese and a Saison are going to pair together, that doesn't mean that every right. soft rind cheese and a Saison right. is going to pair together. Now, I'm going to say that uh, I think that I enjoyed the, the cheese a little bit more on its own in this case than with the pairing. I thought the pairing was was nice. And uh, it, I also tried pairing it with some Bebo because we had some left. And that brought out an interesting soft, like, sweet corn flavor to it. But honestly, this, chair, the, this cheese is beautiful on its own. And I think I kind of like this without the beer. I, I know that sounds, uh, you know, blasphemous. Blas- that's the, that's blasphemy, what I mean. Brian. Blasphemous. You but- want to eat food without beer? In this one case, am I hearing this correctly? One time, no, not really. I'll okay. just drink a bunch beforehand, and there you, you go. Know, you don't. Power through you'll it. wait yeah. and then get your beer yeah, afterwards. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Bernard, thanks for sharing your your Thank knowledge you. with us here. I really, and, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this, and I like how everybody tasted this all at one time because everybody had different like flavor profiles and what they tasted, and that's that's. What you want when pairing. And, you know, this is another one that I thought uh, a character that I looked at my notes and forgot. I did notice it in that cheese was mushroomy, that earthy yeah. mushroom. Yeah. But that's uh, that's our, our show, man. That is our cheese it. and our beer pairing. We tried through a lot of cheeses. We'll put on our website the list of cheeses that we tried if you want to try any of the ones that we did, of course, and the beers that we, sure. that we sampled to uh, let you go through it. It's been an adventure. We learned a lot that, you know, it's not a science. You don't have – it's not something that you have to be pretentious about uh, – we sat here pretty casual. We snacked through. We talked about the flavors that we got. And like you said, Bernard, everybody had a little different palate and got right. just a little something different. Uh, Brian, your favorite cheese. Quick quick shot. The favorite blue, cheese. The blue cheese, for sure. Bernard, yeah. what was your favorite? The sheep's Gouda. Okay. Smalls? I got to go with the Gouda, too, and then the blue cheese. The Gouda and, the, and mine was the uh, the Karst. The, the, the very first. The very first yeah. one, the cheddar. Uh, the cheddar and that the That was Korea. solid. Yeah. yeah. You, see how, like you see how interesting it is, so... Like everybody has different favorite cheese, but every, I'm guaranteed your favorite pairing is not the favorite cheese that you tasted. Though. I think you're probably right, uh, man. I'd have to go really back. I may take another trip back through to see, but right. I, I would think that cheese by itself and the pairing, I'm not sure I'd pick the same ones. There. Yeah, I think I would actually. Would you? Yeah, I think I think okay. the the various pairings with the blue cheese is part of what made me love it. Good stuff. Well, Bernard, if people want to come see your artwork, go down to Brickstore Pub in Decatur, Georgia, right? Yes, every first Wednesday of the month. So the next one will be a week from today. I am dis- still deciding what beers I want to use. It's either going to be all Fanta beers or Cellar beers this time around. Ooh, Fanta okay. beers. Yeah. Bernard, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank Quite you a lot. So much. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of the Beer Guys Radio Show. Coming up next week, we're going to be talking with Holiday Brewing's Chief Brewista, Karen Hertz. And Brian, that brewery specializes in gluten free beers. How is that magic even possible? So we're, we're just exploring all these alternative beers. We had alcohol free recently, now we're doing gluten free. Uh, something for everyone out there. I like free. That sounds good. You like free yeah. if it's free. That's free is good. For more craft beer news, please follow us online. We are Beer Guys Radio on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks again for tuning in. Have a great week, and don't forget to drink local. Cheers. The Beer Guys Radio Show on the Beer Guys Radio Network. BeerGuysRadio.com. Beer Guys Radio.